all right so let's understand what do we mean by hadoop okay so hadoop is a software which was written based on google file system google map reduce and google big table google published these three papers sanjay gemawat and jeff dean uh, they, they they published these three papers one was called google file system other was called google map reduce computation something massive parallel something and third one was the big table based on these three dog cutting and mike caffarella built hadoop and why did they build they were basically trying to build a, a search engine called notch they were trying to build this search engine and they were stuck they were stuck stuck at a very basic problem that even if we download so what is a search engine you crawl the internet you index everything and then you make it really really fast to search across all of this downloaded data so even if so they so i mean dog cutting and mike kefra when they were building their search engine they were stuck at a point that where they realized that even if we build this kind of search engine we won't be able to store the data okay they did not have a great solution and they were lucky at that point of time when they were stuck at this point they were lucky to see that the google had google had just published some paper and and they took it and implemented the file system and that's what became hadoop okay and it was named after toy elephant with which dog cutting son was playing and it is open source this is probably one of the reasons why hadoop exists there are many there, there were many other people who were doing non open source and were trying to implement the same paper but they did not get anywhere the reason is that if you are not open source your adoption chances are going to be very low so since hadoop was open source that too it was apache license that gave them a great acceptance in the industry okay it's a framework to handle big data and it's for reliable scalable and distributed computing okay it's reliable scalable distributed computing okay so this is the the line number h is something what defines all the components under hadoop so initially hadoop was only three components and slowly slowly hadoop became an umbrella term okay as of now hadoop the ecosystem includes around 13 13 14 components okay so all of those components which are under the umbrella of hadoop has these three characteristics reliable scalable and distributed okay and it was written in java so that it can run on any device okay so in the whole ecosystem of hadoop the one that's at the bottom the one that's most important is hdfs okay hdfs is most important component of hadoop ecosystem because this is the place from where the whole uh, magic starts what is hdfs it's a file system the way you have your c colon which is a file system provided by windows to you it's a ntfs file system or vfat file system in the same way you have another file system called hdfs this hdfs can store humongous data and is heavily heavily uh, distributed so you the the hdfs as opposed to your local file system what is a file system it has folders and files okay you can keep anything inside a file okay here that's why file system is very important it's a place where anybody can put any kind of data unlike a database where you could only put the data in a certain structure 
here you can put data of any structure so HDFS is the, the, the first thing and HDFS runs on top of the whole cluster okay so many computers contribute to the storage in HDFS and is heavily heavily optimized and is very highly available in case one computer goes down there is somebody else and that model is something very very powerful there is no substitute as of now a good substitute as of now for HDFS okay as the in HDFS you can store any data while if you take MongoDB Cassandra or or HBase or any other place you'll have to store the data either in a tabular format or in a JSON format or in some other format not like a file while HDFS provides you that file kind of storage all right the next component is HBase HBase is a NoSQL data store a common question which people ask is why would you use HBase when you have HDFS reason is in HBase you store data in a tabular format and not everything can fit into tabular you want to store image you want to store something else you would like to store in HDFS instead of in a tabular structure all right now the next component after HD, HDFS and HBase is the compute engine the file system is providing you the the place to put your files and these files are spread across the cluster okay now but but let's say you want to do some computation who will do that who will execute your logic on many computers parallelly and that's where yarn comes into play or MapReduce comes into play the computation is done by either MapReduce or spark on and they both run on top of yarn then what is yarn yarn is somebody like a bookkeeper who keeps track of who keeps track of which nodes are free which nodes are busy which which ones have what kind of capability so yarn makes it possible to execute anything on any node at any point of time okay yarn can tell you that this these nodes are free you can use them so yarn makes it possible for many other systems to use the cluster okay and the consumers of yarn are MapReduce, spark and others so spark also asks yarn to do the things for it and you as a user of MapReduce uh, spark you will ask MapReduce or spark to get the work done on top of yarn okay and yarn will execute your logic on the cluster or on the distributed environment maybe you have 20 computers and out of those 20 there are two computers which are very fast and rest of the computers are very slow this yarn will figure that out and will execute your logic on those nodes all right so that's about the compute engine now with MapReduce for the computation it was every time you have to do something you would end up writing Java code which was not acceptable and which is not really practical so some people came up with the idea saying that let's write a SQL engine and this this SQL engine is called Hive it takes SQL from you understand the SQL and convert the SQL into MapReduce all right that's where the hive comes into play all right next similar to hive some people realize that SQL is not doing justice to the new paradigm so they wrote a language which is you can say a simplified SQL okay very simplified SQL called Pig Latin 
it is for just like SQL is used to analyze data similarly piglatin is also used for analyzing data all right now there is something called machine learning this is the magician with you machine learning library called Mahat comes up with a collection of algorithms such as generating recommendation or doing the clustering or we will we'll talk about all of these in details so based on because there are many complex algorithms which are not there in SQL okay for that you have Mahat kind of library so that's our machine learning library and then you have at the bottom you have flume what does flume do flume imports unstructured data into HDFS okay if you are moving movies or you are moving uh, videos and lots of files continuously then you use flume in case you want to import in case you want to import data from say Oracle MySQL or Microsoft SQL you can use scoop all right now there are few more things here one is called Uzi Uzi basically provides you kind of a workflow engine what does it mean by a workflow let's imagine let's imagine that you are building a recommendation engine let's imagine that you're building a recommendation engine and what does it require to do the recommendation engine first copying the data into HDFS then writing your uh, cleaning this data converting it into kind of a comma separated values and so on and once that's done when you have reformatted the data then you would like to give it to Mahat because Mahat needs three column data and once Mahat is done you would like to move the recommendation to your web server now if you think about all of these steps there would be more than 12 steps there will be there will be more than 12 steps and those 12 steps if done manually would be error prone Therefore, there is a workflow engine called Uzi where you could go and say first copy the data to HDFS and then once you have uploaded it to HDFS then clean it and make three columns out of it and once three columns are done call Mahat on the same data and whenever once Mahat is finished whatever is the output of the Mahat you copy that to you copy that to some web server okay so all of these things could be chained together into Uzi okay so that you don't have to keep doing it manually over and over also Uzi provides you kind of a scheduler where you could say that here is my script can you run it every day okay so that is Uzi